the time has come for us to start the workshop. Okay, so let us begin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera. Salam juni masiku sayang. Welcome everyone to Calm's workshop series number 15, Google Tools for Teaching and Learning. So semester one, 2020, 2021 is approaching very soon. And I think some of you believe is still searching for the best tools to use for your online teaching and learning. So today, hopefully we want to provide you with another tool that you can also consider when challenging and designing your teaching and learning plans and activities. The objectives of the workshop are to showcase Google tools for teaching and learning and how to apply this tool for effective uh, teaching and learning. And a bit of demonstration will be, will be shown later on. So we are very honored to have with us today and Bahagia Dr. Shariza Muhammad Sharu from University of Malaysia Terengganu. So Assalamualaikum Dr. Waalaikumsalam Dr. So, Kati. How are you? Apa khabar? Alhamdulillah. Fine, fine. <laughs> right. Uh, we can't wait to get started. However, can you please um, let me read a bit of uh, bio data of our speaker today? Yeah. Right. Dr. Shariza Muhammad Sharif is a lecturer in the field of fish, uh, fish genetics at the Faculty of Fishery and Food Sciences, University of Malaysia Terengganu, UMT. He is currently the head of Learning and Development Unit at the Innovation and Talent Development Center, UMT. His research interest is on genetic <coughs> improvement of aquaculture species through breeding and molecular approaches. In teaching and learning, his focus is on the application of simulation-based learning and alternative assessment in fisheries and aquaculture. He has developed several teaching kits based on simulation-based learning, and one of the teaching kit called Fish Breed Pro has won first place in the Anugrah Pemikiran dan Rekabentuk Semula Pendidikan Tinggi Malaysia 2017. Some of the teaching kits has been used to train far farmers on fish breeding and genetics for genetic improvement of aquaculture species. He was the recipient for the 13th Anugrah Academic Negara for Teaching Category Applied Science 2019. He has been invited as selection panel and jury for Anugrah Husband Tri Pendidikan Malaysia Akri as well as UMT Teaching Innovation Competition and UMT Teaching Excellence Award. He has also been invited as trainer for UMT and several universities on assessment and teaching portfolio. So we are very glad to have Dr. Shariza accepted our invitation for today's session. So without further ado, okay, um, let us welcome Dr. Shariza. So over to you, Dr. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kartini. Thank you. Uh, First and foremost, Assalamualaikum and uh, very good morning uh, to all of you participants. And uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Unimas for inviting me uh, to share some of the things related to uh, Google uh, teaching and learning. Uh, but before that, uh, can you hear me clear? Eh? Okay, thank you. So. Uh, and again, thank you for all the participants who joined for this uh, morning session. Uh, I'm very uh, grateful and very appreciate uh, for all of you to join. Eh? As uh, I know, uh, despite your heavy schedule, in fact, uh, for us, we just uh, finished our audit on this uh, data security, ISMS and QMS, and expected to finish tomorrow. So. For ourselves, we just finished our uh, audit yesterday. I'm just an auditee, not an auditor. Uh, so they wanted to see our uh, teaching portfolios and teaching course portfolio and everything. So thank you very much for joining. And uh, today I would like to share with you. So let me share this. Okay, I would like to, to share with you some of the things regarding Google tools, right? Uh, for teaching and learning. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to break into three sessions. Uh, the first session, I will give uh, maybe about 30 minutes to 40 minutes, uh, giving some introduction uh, regarding Google's and their application. And the second thing will go on to have uh, experience on uh, doing this collaboratively and uh, try to end up uh, by... Uh, between one hour, 40 minutes, and I'll open up to question and answers. But at the same time, feel free to 
to ask and I'll be glad to answer along the way that we, we go. So the content that, that I'm going to share is a few things regarding Google Apps because uh, we have a lot, not we, the Google have a lot of apps actually. And uh, what I'm trying to share within this uh, one and a half hours is about the Google Drive, uh, the Google Office, where they have their own words, their own uh, PowerPoint, and their own Excel, uh, Google Sites to making a website, and also Google Form and Jamboard. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, I'm not going to do a survey because after what we're going to do some hands-on, but I'm pretty sure some of you might have been exposed, especially on Google Form, okay? So at the end of this uh, session, uh, it is hoped that participants should be able to explain the function and usage of some of the uh, Google apps, and also to create tasks and collaborate online using Google application. Well, uh, just want to highlight uh, something about me is uh, I welcome everybody uh, to contact me anytime because uh, having this webinar actually uh, is, a, is a blessing for me because uh, I created and I have uh, established a lot of contacts from uh, universities out of UMT. So I'm very grateful if uh, you have any inquiries feel free to contact me through uh, WhatsApp or Telegram using this number 019-286-7794 and you can also email to me. This is my uh, formal office email address uh, shahriza at umt.edu.my and also uh, my personal Gmail uh, shahrizamatsharif at gmail.com and uh, Again, I would like to highlight about this. Well, currently, I'm a certified Google Educator Level 1. But the thing that I would like to share is not, is not of my certification. But for those of you who didn't know about this, uh, Google, just like Apple, Apple, they have this uh, Apple Teacher certification. So Google also have their own certification. I'm just... Uh, obtained level one last February before PKP and uh, two months back I finished a course on uh, Google certified level two uh, course and uh, hope to have the exam next month to achieve a level two and Google also have once you achieve level one and level two you can apply for certification as Google trainer certified Google trainer and another one, the top one is Google Certified Innovator. So this uh, certification might not be related to the promotion to become professor, associate professor, but at least it helps you to strengthen your teaching and learning skills as uh, when you become more uh, skillful in using all these apps, it will enhance your teaching and learning ability. So. Uh, everybody uh, are most welcome. I'm not uh, campaigning. I'm not a Google uh, people, but I'm trying to promote because based on my experience, when you follow through the certification, it helps in your uh, usage of apps for teaching and learning. So if it can benefit the student, so why not uh, you try to have this certification which finally can uh, attain, help the student to attain the course learning outcome and the teaching and learning. Well, uh, I would like to take this about five to 10 minutes to explain about me. So I'm a fish geneticist. This is what I do. I consider myself as a fish wedding planner and matchmaker. And these are some of the activities that I do. You match make. Uh, I'm doing breeding on uh, this fish. If some of you know, it's a beta fish or fighting fish. So my function is to match make them and breed them, hoping to have uh, produce new coloration or new patterns. So this is what I do in my, in my uh, field. And uh, I would like to start off 
this uh, Google tools by highlighting some of our aquaculture program. The reason is I'm trying to relate uh, the teaching and learning with the Google apps. So in my faculty, we have this aquaculture and fisheries academic program. And this program recites regarding the culture and propagation of fish, uh, the development of the feed, okay, management of the culture, you do some breeding, okay, and also you do nursing of the babies. And apart from that, we have outdoor, a lot of outdoor activities where students are exposed on the management, capture fisheries, uh, the biology of the fishes, and uh, they are exposed to uh, field work, okay, either in the uh, marine environment as well as the uh, coastal environment. And they also have the chance to uh, ride on a boat, experience the aspect of uh, fisheries management. Okay, here uh, they become tailor, but not making uh, baju kurung or shirt, but trying to mend or to create a net. Okay, the purpose is to for them to understand how the net is being made and how the strength of the net is being measured. And they also learn how to use all those uh, mechanical tools and also apparatus and learn how to uh, analyze the water quality of the certain areas. And apart from that, they are also trained to produce uh, being innovative and producing various uh, fisheries product, okay? And once they have created it, they are being tested. Uh, it's a good thing because sometimes I also been invited as a judge or jury. So the good thing is you have the chance to eat and taste some of their delicious delicacies that has been done. So these aquaculture programs are there to produce students who will ensure that you all will have these delicious delicacies always on the table because the students, when they go, they go out, part of their work when they work is to manage our fisheries resources to ensure that they are not depleted and sustainable in the, uh, in the future. So what you can see in our program is actually all related to applied science. Yeah, a lot of collaborative work, a lot of uh, problem solving, a lot of discussion, okay, peer learning uh, happens. And when you talk about uh, remote learning nowadays as the start of PKP in March, you understand that all these things cannot be done anymore. Okay, even now, when we have our diploma in fishery student coming in, in uh, recently in July, can imagine that these diploma student who are just uh, SPM leavers didn't enter and register physically in the university. Once they registered, they are uh, situated in their house. Okay and we start to teach them. So this situation is different compared to during March PKP, where these students who are taking the semesters in March are already here in the universities. And I'm sure in the Unimas also, is, uh, the same situation happened. And after that, some of them go back. But for our case in the diploma, Student didn't register uh, physically. They are in the house. So it's quite a challenge to start off activities where you don't meet the students and uh, you do it and they don't expose to the types of learning that we are conducting right now. But not just to say that, the issue or the, 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 the topic is regarding online learning. So you cannot do this anymore and people are situated differently. And apart from that, if you look at the learning pyramid, the concepts 
that you can see here is that the retention rate of a student during lectures and reading is less compared to when apart from having lectures, reading, they are able to discuss, they are able to practice by doing, and they are able to teach others. So having to conduct online learning and also remote learning and having face-to-face -face session through online, either using WebEx, Google Meet, so how do you try to ensure this thing happens? Okay, and you try to monitor them. So I know that a lot of uh, us use many types of uh, platforms. Okay, many, many types of apps. Yeah? Some of them, the quizzes, ad puzzle, some might be using Padlet and I think the same goes with uh, lecturers in Unimas, as well as me. We have our learning management system, LMS. Okay? And these are being exposed and trained to the lecturers. So today, I would like to highlight, apart from all these uh, apps that is currently being used or popularly used by academicians, we have several cloud computing platform okay one of them is the google suite and another one is the office 365 if uh, any one of you have ever used this please uh, respond in the chat either by saying yes or have used it before and if you uh, don't mind you can share with me what are the apps in google suite that have that have been used by you or in 365. So uh, we actually in the universities, we are thankful to KPT. I think Unimas also uh, have this uh, 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 that opportunity. You know that our KPT, the ministry, have subscribed Office 365. And in like us in UMT, if you download Office 365 and you use the formal email address, you get free one terabyte of uh, OneDrive cloud drive. So this is what being offered and KPT has done that. I've also used uh, Office 365. And another one is the Google Suite. In UMT, we subscribe Google Suite. And our formal email are currently now based on Google. So because of that, in UMT, all staff members will get unlimited storage for Google Drive. So having that advantage since uh, mid of last year, so that is why we try to expose our lecturers and staff to use Google Suite since we have this uh, opportunity. So let me check that right in the chat. Ah, yeah, see, there are several uh, lecturers, participants who have used it. Okay, uh, Dr. Hashimoto have used uh, Google Suite and Office 365. <clears throat> ah, Dr. Chua, Iman. Dr. Chua, uh, is the Dr. Chua who, if I'm not mistaken, you won a gold medal, right? Recently, in Talik. Okay, so you're heavily using uh, Google Suite, yes, especially Google Doc, Forms, uh, Jamboard, and Google Site. Okay. Uh, Dr. Kartini also have used Office 365 on uh, Teams and also OneDrive. Ah, okay. I I also followed some of your YouTube, huh? Dr. Chua. <clears throat> one of the one of the uh, we we'll call that ad YouTubers apart from uh, Prof. Karim. <laughs> Thanks for following me, uh, Dr. Chua. <clears throat> okay, so. 
I would like to continue. Now, what Google Apps enables, just like Microsoft, is that you are able to create content, you are able to do collaborative work, okay, and you are able to create a worksheet for the students to do. In fact, you are able to create a quiz and you are able to assign tasks. So these are the opportunity that you can do when you have all this uh, cloud-based uh, application. So uh, that's about it, what I'm trying to introduce. Now I'm going to go further. Uh, in order to go further, I'm trying to show all these uh, apps using uh, Google Chrome. So can participant, if you have, please, uh, your, you are using your computer or even you are using your handphone, uh, please open the Google Chrome and you can go to google.com and sign in using your personal uh, email or if you have your institutional email. Okay, I'll try to show here. So you can go to uh, google.com. <clears throat> if you have, then you can sign up to your account. Okay, basically you can sign up. Now currently I'm using two different, uh, I have two different accounts, one my personal account and one my institutional account. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I'm trying to show you in this part is, if you have uh, registered in uh, Google, you have this uh, nine box at the top right corner here. So this one, these are the list of uh, apps that is uh, in Google ecosystem. Okay. So I'm trying to highlight uh, some of them. If you look here, this is the main, I can say the heart of this uh, Google ecosystem because everything that you do, everything that you create will be documented and will be kept in a cloud drive. And here we have a Google Drive. You have your Gmail, okay? And you have the apps here for your Google Doc or some something similar to Microsoft Word. You have here your Google Sheet, which is similar to uh, Microsoft Excel. You have here Google Slide, like the currently now I'm I'm using here. Okay. So it's just like a Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay. Apart from that, I'm pretty sure some of you might have a. Uh, familiar with the Google Calendar, okay? Uh, you have also something like WhatsApp, the Google Chat, Google Meet. Uh, I've used this also apart from WebEx uh, to uh, conduct my online class. Sites is where you have, uh, you are able to create a website. You can use this also to create your content for your subject, you also have contacts, okay? You have a Google Groups in which uh, you can uh, have a groups of uh, people together to communicate and YouTube. Actually, YouTube is not with Google, but Google have uh, overtaken YouTube and now YouTube is also part of uh, Google. Uh, we also have uh, Google Maps, Actually, you can use Google Maps for your teaching and learning. <clears throat> there, is, there is a way. Okay, uh, You have Google Hangout, the, the most popular one, Google Form. This is where I think most of you have already filled up any form or response uh, that has been given, or I'm pretty sure some of you have uh, created the form. You also have a Google Keep, it's just like notes. But the good thing, another advantage of having Google Keep is that it can grab the image, okay, the text that is inside the image and to become a text. So what does it mean is that imagine if you have 
a letter okay a letter and it is in hard copy maybe you forgot you forgot where you put your soft copy of it so what you can do is you can snap a picture you put it inside google keep and there is an instruction where they will ask grab text image to text so it can transform what you have captured and convert it into text so that is one advantage of having a google keep uh, you have jamboard <clears throat> i see some of you have used a uh, jamboard so jamboard can also be used for collaborative work and also to create content uh, google earth is uh, another another one uh, where we can use it for teaching and learning now apart from that the most uh, commonly used is the google classroom okay this is uh, something like a lms <clears throat> but this lms is uh, built for google actually So these are among the apps that can be used when you, you are inside the Google ecosystem. So <clears throat> before we proceed uh, for participants to experience some uh, hands-on, for those of you who haven't tried, okay, I'll show to you, I'll share to you some of the things that I've uh, used. Put it up here. <clears throat> All right. So I've collected here, built a, fo uh, a folder so that I can easily track and show to you. Okay. Some of the works that I, I've used is for things where they need to they need to identify they need to apply and they need to analyze so we conduct using google sheet for example where students analyze their their data and they put up inside here collaboratively uh, this uh, the name phenotype one phenotype two is the group member the group name so they key in their data so from here we can monitor what they are doing and also they can see and compare and analyze the performance of their fish compared to the others. And some of the works that I would like to share with, uh, with some of you is how they need to identify and solve problems. We give them a technical report for them to check and they need to match up in the technical report what are the things related to the steps in in my case designing a breeding program and you can see this is from one group this is from another group and this is from the other group so these things are being done collaboratively and you can track if you see here they have a version history and you can know who is doing who and and what okay and when was it uh, being done So a lot of our collaborative works can be done using uh, Google Sheet, for example. And another thing, they can create content like this is where we ask the student to develop a content that can be shared among group members. So you can see here fisheries exploitation where students are exposed in which they are assigned. Each fishing gears are handled by one, 
each uh, one group and they need to fill up all this thing okay put up a picture and also share one video so we don't give a notes because this is we want them to construct uh, the uh, the knowledge so they try to find they discuss in groups and they put up here and they share among their colleagues by having this now uh, we as an uh, lecturers we can monitor and we can give feedback straight away whether the points that they are putting in is correct or not whether the videos that they are putting in is uh, the right videos and along with it at the same time in one session they create content okay it's just a simple content they create a content in which every members in the class can share so apart from that they are able to uh, what we call as peer learning among group members so these are among what uh, using google apps like in this case, I'm using a Google Doc. Just now, what I showed to you is using Google Sheet. Okay. And in some cases, I even ask them when they when they are in uh, some other places. This is just to to help them to analyze. So you can see here, I'm using Google Sheet. What I'm trying to do is. We ask them to go to their market respective uh, place and uh, try to see what are the fishes that has been sold and what is the price. So you can see here people from Perlis, student from Perlis, a student from Kedah, uh, from Penang, okay. uh, some students from uh, Pera. Uh, there are a few places so the task for them is to get the information what is being sold in the market and from here we do a group discussion to see and they need to analyze which place or state that sold the most expensive price okay then they can compare and after that we will ask them to do a reflection okay what can they found out regarding the fisheries resources i'm sorry I'm, I'm talking a lot about fish because, uh, as you know, I'm a, I'm a fisheries uh, lecturer. But at least what I'm trying to highlight here is the learning process in which the student have the chance to collaborate, the student have the chance to analyze and solving problems. Okay? And in your case, either in education or engineering or even science, similar approach can be done. Maybe the content is different, but you are using the, the same pedagogical, uh, pedagogical approach in which this is just a platform, a tool where they discuss, they collaborate, and they analyze, and they solve situation. So it's not just uh, knowledge at level one, even you can push them up to the higher order thinking by having this. Another thing using Google Sheet. Okay, try to open my another Google Drive. Okay. Dr. Shah? Yes. Um, just a quick question. Uh -huh. um, when you do all these activities, um, either via Google Sheet or Google Form. Uh -huh. So you um, you you plan the activity as in um, sort of on, on their own time, and then you you come back again and discuss uh, live virtually, uh, or uh, or you you give feedback on the sheets or forms itself. Okay. So how do you give feedback? Thank Thank you very much uh, for the question, Dr. Katini. I'm using various approach. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, for each session, I always uh, analyze their situation and their condition. So there are activities where that thing needs to be settled within the classroom. So I seldom having lectures during my, my online session. So during my online session, 
instruction are being given earlier, let's say one day before. So what they need to do when during the class, that is where they, they conduct and we have given them a certain period of time. Let's say if my class is two hours. So the first one hour is where they do it. And then the other half an hour, that is where discussion will begin. And in some cases, I track them using WhatsApp because uh, we created each group having their own WhatsApp and I'm the member of that. So that is where formative assessment are being done. So we can know what they understand, what they don't understand. And that is where we assist them in their teaching and learning. So some of them are, dis are being discussed even out of the classroom. Uh, like for example, when they are outside, so we give them time. Okay, your first task, uh, one hour, go to the market. Okay, you try to see and figure out and analyze. Next week's class, we discuss. Some of them, I'm giving them as an assignment. So it depends. So I'm using various uh, ways uh, to, to conduct this uh, teaching and learning. Yeah. <clears throat> Dr. Shah, yes. uh, this is one question from uh, Dr. Hashimatul. Okay. She asks, uh, is there any event that students uh, deleted the other students work? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Of course there is because they are, they are trying to familiarize with the system. I give you one example. Uh, the recent one that, that is the first time that I face where diploma students coming in, they have, they don't have prior knowledge about uh, all these Google apps. They're just SPM leavers. They don't come to the university. They started their study over, uh, over there. So the good thing about Google is that you have this uh, version history. For example, I show here. Uh, just for your information, to expose them to Google, generally the first two weeks, I won't start my class, but I'm just playing around with them, testing and exposing them with this. And then only I will start. But when we start, you can see this, for example, August 25, uh, August 19, August 18. Student can revert back to the history part in which that thing has not been deleted yet. Even they can go back to the original that has been created. I can start back from the original one. For example, if I click here, okay, you see, this is the first starting of the file. So I can start from here and uh, restore this version or I can restore, if I click on the August 13, it sometimes to, to refresh. So whether I can restore at this version. Okay. I put it here. Ah, there. So you can restore back in a version where that thing has not been deleted yet. Ah, so that is the another good thing about having this uh, uh, Google Apps. Of course, uh, during the first time when they are doing it, uh, accidental delete can happen. Uh, but uh, what I'm trying to show you, this is how one of the way where if you want to revert back to a certain uh, 
state in which that thing was not deleted, uh, you can select and you can choose whether you want to restore this uh, version or not. Uh, this is how things are being done. Okay. All right. So, so mainly students also have to play around with the with the with the apps uh, Sorry. earlier on. Again, Dr. Katini? Yeah, mainly the students also have to uh, be yep. hands on and play around yes. with the, the, the uh, apps, especially if they are first time. Yeah. So that's why in my cases, um we don't start yet with this one. Mm. Uh, for the first week, I play around with them. Okay, let us do some simple thing. I created mm -hmm. this uh, Google Sheet. You try to put your name. I want to see first mm -hmm. how familiar you are. Right. Uh, then as the thing progress, then only we, we start them to do the, the actual work. Okay. Uh, this one that I want to show to you is... Uh... Right. This is recently being done by our diploma students. So they create content regarding the fisheries resources. So uh, each category is being uh, prepared by different groups, each group. So you can see how creative they are compared to if we were to prepare the notes and show to them. And from here, they discuss, uh, I will be doing the validation whether their, their, their content is right or not. But uh, the way I do it, just through coaching, for example, what I mean by coaching is, I will ask the group member, can you check this? What do you think? Uh, have, you, have you checked uh, enough data? Uh, so I wouldn't simply just say, uh, you, this is not right, so you need to change. So we ask them to think, okay, what do you think about this? Uh, uh, why don't you try to compare with some other references? And then we ask them to make a decision. So based on, on uh, several references, what do you suggest? Then they will say, that, okay, I think we need to change this because it's not correct. So it's being conducted. You see how creative they are. I don't ask them to put this. I say that I don't want all of you to stress. Uh, you don't need to prepare all those uh, changi changi things. But I told them, if you want to do it, please don't complain because what I want is the point, whether you're correct or not. But they go up to this mile to, to prepare. So that's why I said giving them the empowerment of learning actually helps them to be more creative, to be more confident. Okay, so this is uh, where students use a uh, Google Sheet to create content. And because you share this uh, platform, so every student have the chance to see all the slides. And this is where they can learn from each other. Uh, but it does not stop here. Um, as I told you, this is a learning, uh, it's just a tool. The most important thing is the instructional design. So feedbacks, formative assessment will always be uh, implemented to see how much their learning takes place. So one of them that I do is, let me go back here. Was this? I'm using Google Form. Okay, just now I've showed uh, to the participant, Google Doc, Google Sheet, Google Form, uh, sorry, Google Slide. So I'm using form. Okay, how do I track their understanding? What they need to do is they need to upload a video. So they explain about some of the fisheries resources and submit their files over here. And I'll ask them to write up what have you learned and what are the things that is still unclear. So having to use uh, Google Form allows me to capture this data. The good thing is, for some of you who haven't used uh, Google Form, when you have Google Form, all this data will be compiled in a Google Sheet. This is being created by Google. They created a link. 
So you can see the student that sent the link of their videos and the comment. Okay. So you can see here, they are confused about what this thing. For example, I'm having some confusion trying to dwell into fish taxonomy, especially in the suborder, subfamily, so on and so forth. So from here, I can tailor and plan what needs to be done for my next session of the class, whether I move on to the new topic or maybe I need to emphasize some activities to strengthen their understanding of what they are unclear of. And the video that they uploaded will be created by Google, will be compiled by Google in one folder. So these are all the videos that have been prepared by the student. So I just need them to prepare a two minute video, not more than two minutes. So the most important thing is they are in front of the camera. Now the purpose is not just to take the attendance, but we are trying to expose them to IR 4.0. Okay. Nowadays, we have uh, all these uh, video resume. So we try to make them more confident in front of the, uh, uh, of the camera so that next time when they come to the final year, to them it's normal to be in front to talk more confident when they need to make their own video resume. So in my case, teaching and learning is not just about uh, having them to, to uh, have this uh, skill and knowledge regarding the subject, but also to prepare their soft skills uh, in terms of communication. And uh, even though I'm not uh, evaluating or assessing their communication, but I'm using this opportunity for them to be more confident of themselves. So this is among the usage that I use for my teaching and learning using Google Form. Okay, one last thing before we go. All right, I'm also, you can create content. Okay. This thing when, when uh, I use this, when I need to give a talk uh, regarding a teaching portfolio, so I learned this from Prof Karim two years back, uh, how to create content using a Google site. So from here, you create a, a content, you just put in the, the slides and so on. <clears throat> okay. So when you teach, uh, the participant can refer to your website. Okay. So creating content may not just uh, only using Google Doc, Google Sheet or Google Slide, but creating content can also be done using Google Sites. So I'm also using this, uh, especially to when I conduct uh, this course on teaching portfolio. And having this, you are able to add in, for example, the resources, Okay, not able to resources, some of the notes. And in fact, for example, like in this case, um, you can link them up to several websites and it is more interactive when you're trying to develop this. So this is among the use of uh, Google Sites in the Google Apps uh, platform that you can use okay uh there's anything else that i want to show before we go to our activity that, uh, Shah, yes yeah uh, there is another question from dr shafina uh, okay. can student uh, she asked can students use this platform to create an e-portfolio if so which app is most possible in the past, we suggested them to Wix. So the, 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 there are there are questions. Can students use this platform to create an e-portfolio? And if appropriate, then uh, what is the most uh, suitable apps? Okay. If they want to create e-portfolio, I would suggest that they can also use Google Site. 
to create their e-portfolio. Uh, because I'm showing you this example. Okay. This is one example. I'm preparing my my uh, my own e-portfolio too. But uh, as you know, e-portfolio depends on the the format that you want to prepare. So student can also Dr. prepare Shariza, their e-portfolio. Yes. Yes. Uh, while trying to explain this, there's another question related to e-portfolio or okay. Google Sites uh, All right. from Associate Professor Dr. Soba here. Um, thank you okay, for Soba. the valuable sharing, Dr. Reza. Could you please kindly explain how to create this Google site? Where exactly do you get access ah. to this? So okay. maybe, maybe you have to start from the, yes. yeah, the front. Okay. <laughs> I, I will start after uh, afterward. Now, ah, now, okay. <laughs> Prof. Soba, we are just uh, sharing first so that uh, participants can see uh, how can this thing being applied. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll uh, get back to this after after I shoot you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Katini. Now this is a uh, Google site, so student can prepare their e-portfolio here, showing their uh, achievement or the attainment of some task that they they do. Okay, so uh, I would suggest that they can use a uh, Google uh, site to create their e-portfolio. In fact, uh, if they want to create an e-portfolio using ebook, they can also use a Google Sheet. Okay, there is a way, but it will take long for me to show uh, where when you build up the content using the Google slide, you can convert them as an e-book. So that can also be used to prepare an e-portfolio. Okay, how to, to get that thing? All right. When you go to Google, I started from the earlier part. First, you need to go to google.com. You need to register for sign in until you have this icon here. Okay. Once you have this icon, you can see here this nine box, which I showed to you earlier. Let me move this. Okay. So you have the list of apps. This is where you can uh, start to open. If you notice, there is here sites, S I T E S. Okay, so you click sites. Okay, you will be brought into this. You can open using a certain template. See here, for example, a template student portfolio. You can also ask the student to prepare like this, or you can start blank. Doctor, yes. Do you need to have the Google Suite uh, education to have the Google site? Uh, no. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. You don't need to have. If you don't have a Google Suite that is uh, being uh, subscribed by mm -hmm. the institutional <coughs> university, you can use registered as a personal. So if you have a person, actually, if you have a personal Gmail account, Google give you free 15 gigabyte of Google Drive. So when you sign up for Google, you already get a 15 gigabyte free of Google Drive. And you have access to all those uh, apps. For example, like this. This is my personal Gmail. So when I registered, I can have access to all this. Uh, so not necessary that you need the, the institution need to have a Google Suite. The only advantage of, of having Google Suite by your institution is that you can have unlimited storage. That means a lot of activities you can ask, even if you have, you just imagine you have 100 students, you ask them to upload a video, maybe they don't share a link, you upload a video. If that one video takes about 500 megabyte, 
So you just imagine 100 students. So a lot of data can be kept inside. Even when you do survey, for example. So a lot of data. Like in my case, this is my personal account. If you notice here, why I have 100 gigabyte? Because I pay for extra. You get free 15. Now you want more, you need to pay. If I'm not mistaken, I'm paying 80 ringgit a month. Like that. Uh, to subscribe for 100 gig uh, 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 drive. Now, so again, using personal account, you have access to all this. So from here, you can create, uh, you can use a certain theme, change the color. Okay. Uh, you can add in a page, this is the, the, the currently current page. You can insert a table of content. You can insert a page inside here. Okay. And you can even insert text box. Everything can be done inside, inside this thing. So this is how you can create your uh, website, having all those things. And uh, you can also... Uh, give this as an assignment for the student to develop their portfolio so let them discuss and you trust me when they need to do peer learning and when they start to teach other people the person who knows will teach on how to create this so that is where the learning takes place i give you an example in my case where i created this google sheet okay Let me go back here. Okay. Suddenly, the line is uh, a little bit slow. Mm -hmm. Ah, so Dr. Katini, you found already the Google site, not <laughs> in this nine box. Uh, I'm sorry, we don't have that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I did search. I, I did search for research, mine as well, okay. but then uh, okay. it seems that it seems that yes. maybe it is only for Google Suite. suite ah, maybe I think because so. of, <laughs> like um, this. If you don't find it, you can go here. Okay, where should we More go? More from G Suite Marketplace. <laughs> Okay. I, I, okay. Ah. Because I already uh, just now I already clicked, but I haven't seen the Google. Can I buy a code? Can I buy a code? Oh uh, no, because this thing, oh. the mm -hmm. the one that I created for the teaching portfolio, is using this one. I created it two years back before you right. subscribe for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, so for example, if you cannot. Where should we go? Because okay, Dr. Isabel go said, uh, Dr. Isabel said uh, she can, she get the Google ah. site for okay. free, she said. <laughs> yes, you can go here. You see this new, when you go to Google Drive, okay, let's say you go to Google Drive, did you see this uh, top left box here with a plus sign? Uh, here, you can you ask you whether you want to create a new folder, you want to upload a file, you want to upload a folder, or this is the list of uh, apps that you want. You can go to this more here. So up until here, you can have here Google Drawing, and you see Google Map, a uh, Google Site. Okay, can you can you find this or not?
And you can go to this plus sign. Out of here, go to more. Yes, I found it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so it's inside here. Right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all right. Okay. Mm. Why I cannot open this for a while? This side. Okay, let me just show you one thing before we, we do some hands on. Okay, try to open up again. Is it because I open too much? All right. Let me open up a new one. Okay, well, I'm trying to open this. If there's any question from the floor, please uh, uh, ask me anything. Yes, okay. If anybody has any questions for Dr. Shariza, would you mind um, just write it up in the chat box or in the Q&A box as well, yeah? Okay, uh, a question, Dr. Shah. Okay. Um, beside members of the group, can other students edit the slides or sheets? Can, because uh, you can allow to for sheet. Or if they share their, ah. their, their slides or sheets, if they okay. don't share, if they don't share, then they cannot. They cannot do it. Oh, other people ah. cannot do it. So, <clears throat> the good thing about when you use uh, things like uh, Microsoft Office and also Google, when you have a cloud platform, mm -hmm. you are able to create a shareable link. Mm -hmm. Okay, take for example, trying to open this. Let me try to do this again. I hope I can access this. We're suddenly having problems. After searching for <laughs> searching for ha, suddenly it hacked. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's like okay. ah okay. Hopefully, please open. Oh, why I can open this? Okay, maybe I should do it here. All right. Okay, if you notice here, you have this uh, human, two human here. I'm trying to show you. Okay, I will show to you how to to for to use with uh, for teacher learning uh, using Google site. Okay. When you create this file, after we will do the hands on. You can get link 
you have two options here. You can share or get link. So if you select, you see here, you can set the setting. This is the link that is being given. So if you want to give to the student, then you copy this link. You can set it restricted or public. Okay. And you can set the people who shared with you, can they just view? That means they cannot edit at all. Or they can only comment. Right? They cannot edit, but they can make comments or they can edit. So if you want the student to collaborate, <clears throat> then you must make sure that when you do the sharing, I show it to you again. You can uh, right click your mouse and this uh, pop up window will appear. So you can put here get link or share. Share, you can directly add in who is the person whom you want to share. You can put an email. Or else you can here get link. So when you get the link, make sure it is public. Don't make it restricted. If restricted, that means no sharing. Okay. Then, if you want them to comment, make sure this thing can be edited. Editor. Then, you copy this link and paste in the WhatsApp group of your student or you give it in your LMS, right? Or in any place where you want the student to, to have access to that link. So, the student will click this link and it will open up, right? Okay. Regarding Google for teaching and learning purposes. Okay. Just now, I showed to you here. I created content. Google Sites, you can create content. And this is where you can also create activity in which the student can uh, respond and react to your site. So, for example, now I'm, I'm creating a content because uh, I'm also giving training to UMT staff regarding teaching portfolio. Imagine if you have your subject, so you have this subject. Right, you can have the course aim so on. Then this is where maybe you put in your slides. Right, so the student can have access. They can study at their own pace, or you can even use this site to give lectures or to give some explanation. So you have two two ways. The thing is there, so you have can have interaction like for example like this one. At the same time. I have interaction where participant can uh, respond, right? In some cases, you can link to a quiz. You can add in a link to YouTube videos. Or you can add in, for example, some of you may use Adpuzzle. So you can put in embed the link so the student can uh, click and uh, respond to any videos and uh, type in the question, uh, answer the question. So this is how you can use Google site. It's just like creating content. Okay. I hope I answered this. All right. So now let's go on uh, to, to try. Okay. I'm going to have uh, one. This is very awkward today. Suddenly out of the whole time, I cannot open, but it's okay. <clears throat> Let me open this. Uh, uh, Dr. Shah, can we ask yes. the question? Because there yeah. is a few questions from the chat box. Okay. Um, from Dr. Dr. Lee, uh, he, he asked about what kind of activities that can be conducted under e-portfolio. Oh, under oh, e-portfolio? Under... Yes, yes. Okay. E-portfolio means that what I, I understand is the student will create content. Uh, showing their attainment of learning. So if you put in a certain, depends on the task that you want to give them. So I, for example, I've, uh, in my case, when I ask them to develop, but I don't ask them to develop e-portfolio at that time. Uh, when I use portfolio-based assessment, they have five tasks that they need to do. And the most important thing in, in portfolio, if you are trying to use it as an alternative assessment, uh, this is another, yeah, 
you must have a reflection. The student must have a reflection. And that is one of the criteria of alternative assessment. So you have a task. For example, I shared to you what I do. Task number one, they need to, to find some information regarding a particular species. Okay. And based on that species, they need to identify the morphology, the habitat and distribution, and they need to make a video explaining about it. At the end of task one, they need to do a reflection. What have they obtained by, using, by having that activity? Then task number two is they need to write some explanation. That is a question. It's an open, uh, sort of like open book uh, assignment. They need to make a review of a certain topic. So they prepare a topic, they write up, and they put it inside their e-portfolio. And then they write a reflection. What have they obtained from, from that? Uh, task number three, maybe, if for example, I give them a certain activity, a practical activity, so they need to video the activity showing that they learn and after that they make a reflection so these are among the things that you if you want to develop the content can be designed by you uh, depending on the course learning outcome that you are trying to achieve so this is one of the way how you can use uh, e-portfolio uh, in your teaching and learning so one is an uh, alternative assessment Another one is as an assignment. Sometimes uh, you give assignment, five different assignment by one group. Uh, assignment number one is being headed by one leader, Sec uh, second assignment by second leader. So they develop an e-portfolio showing their activities. You can do even like that. Okay, I've seen some cases where they use e-portfolio to show their progress in handling events. There are some subjects in which they need to handle an event, a seminar. So anything progress that they do, they put it inside their e-portfolio. And the lecturers will track their progress and also assess their performance based on the content that I have put up. So there are various ways uh, for uh, lecturers to use e-portfolio for teaching and learning. And e-portfolio also can be used for the student, for example, to develop content. For example, you say that I want you to develop or you try to develop a book, an e-book, okay, but using e-portfolio. These are the content that you need to have. So the student will create them and you can track. And this is where formative assessment can be done. You can make comments, okay? And you can track their learning, how they progress. So a lot of uh, alternative uh, ways that you can, you can use e uh, sorry, e-portfolio. Okay, is there any question that I missed? Uh, from Dr. Lawrence, uh, do we need to update the Google Drive? Ah, okay. All this platform is auto-updated and auto-save. So just now when you use this, any adjustment is automatically safe. So that's why you don't find any safe button here. Uh, and you can also ask the student to download, okay, or directly email. So they are they uh, you don't need to do any, anything, but uh, but please be uh, please be uh, mindful when you want to update. Make sure that your handphone, if you have it inside your handphone or inside your tablet, is also signed up. Otherwise, it will not be updated uh, because some cases where, for example. You have a tablet. You don't connect it to to a Wi-Fi, or you just finish uh, something. You upload uh, that drive. Uh, I hope you don't get confused because what I'm trying to show you here is the one that is online. Google Drive 
can also be downloaded as a software in which you put it inside your laptop and it will update. So in this case, you are not opening your Google Drive uh, through the website. You are opening your Google Drive in a folder in your directory. So in this case, if you are doing some work, you're updating, you store it back. If you don't connect the, to the internet, so this file will not be updated. Uh, so sometimes you open up the tablet, then you see there are some cases where they open up the file and they surprise that the file was not updated. So in synchronization of the file, you must make sure that everything must be connected to the internet. Then only this thing can uh, be done. Uh, but the, the, to answer that, it is auto-updated. Okay. Ah, can you please share how we could monitor student contribution uh, to group tasks online? Okay, this is what I'm trying to show, but don't know why it cannot open. Okay, I'm trying again. I'm to open my drive. Because what I'm trying to show you is where uh, my students now doing lab work, lab assignment using Google Sheet. Okay. Uh, let me try to close everything back again. I try to uh, open it up. Sorry for the delay. Uh, there's some glitch, technical glitch. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Ah, okay, get back. Okay, uh, Prof. Suba, I'm trying to show you. Okay, <clears throat> since we are doing remote learning, so our lab class is online. So this is, for example, trying to show you. This is the current one where the student need to submit by tonight. Tonight is the deadline. So I'm trying to show to you fresh from the oven. Okay. I have, I have a WhatsApp group, okay, like for example this one, I have a WhatsApp group of uh, each of these uh, group members uh, of this group. So, when we give them this task, we created a template and they fill up based on the assignment. You see, these are being done by the student. So you know whether you know the progress of the student, how much they are progressing. Okay, this must be done by the group work collaboratively. They need to put in the pictures. Uh, they need to fill up this uh, information. Yeah, you can see, and they need to provide drawing of uh, pictures. Each student needs to draw two pictures. Now you can see here, 
uh, if you have seven students, that means you should have 14 drawings they need to select. So from here, you can track how far the students are progressing. Okay, whether they have completed or not. Uh, that's a good thing. And even the information. Right? Now, if you want to see the student contribution, who did this, who did that, whether the student who is assigned to do this didn't do it, this is where you go to file, you go to version history. So if you look here, you know who did what. Okay. And from here, you can track who didn't do any work, who didn't contribute. You see, when I highlighted this, this color come out. So you know that this student is contributing here. Okay. Now in this case, go back to this. Okay, make it a little bit smaller. So from here, you can see who is contributing what and where. Uh, see the color? So you know that during this time, Darwin is, is contributing into this right up. Uh, so you see, uh, Prof. Subha, is it? how you can track the student. That's why in my case, I prefer to use this. Uh, because I can see who is doing what, and at the same time, since I have them inside WhatsApp, I can track the discussion also. So we know that who, which group is active, which group is not active, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Can we try to 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 have one activity, uh, maybe two activity? I still got time. Okay. Now I will start from the scratch. I will start from, from the early part. Let us do this. Okay, for those of you who haven't me. Welcome, welcome, Masumba. Oh, not Gmail, Drive. Okay. Now, let us do some collaborative work. A simple one. Uh, if we have time, we try to do three, but we start off with this. Okay. <clears throat> I will create a Google Doc. Okay. So I show you from scratch so that every participant can see how the from the start. Okay. I open up a Google Doc here. I go to this uh, section. This new. So I open up Google Doc, blank document. Okay, just a simple thing. I'm putting here my favorite car. I insert a table. Okay. Let's say this is a nickname. Okay. Name of the car. And maybe we put here, you insert picture.
Okay, maybe I delete this one. Delete column. Okay, make this. So once I have prepared this, right? What uh, I need participant to do is contribute, putting your nickname, your car name, and insert a picture. So how to do this? I will start to share this file. So I get a shareable link. Oh, sorry, this is insert link. Cancel. <clears throat> I put here Unimas. This is where you name your file. Docs activity one. All right. It will be auto save. Now, what I need to do is if you see here. Okay, down below, Unimas Doc Activity 1. How am I going to share this to everybody? You highlight this uh, file. There is a pop up icon here. Okay, now I, I put in get link. I make it public, anyone with the link. Okay, and I make this uh, editor. That means everybody can edit. Now I'm copying this link. Okay, I'm sharing this link to the participant. You try to click and uh, please feel free to contribute into this. Okay, let me open up and see. So, uh, Prof. Suba, you can see how I can track who is coming into who. Uh, see, we have here. Uh, can you see everybody is uh, working? So to insert picture, okay, I add up some more, some more uh, line here. Insert row below. I'm inserting more rows. Doctor. Uh, yes, Dr. Mas yeah. <laughs> when I'm trying to also contribute <laughs> to the to the uh, to the answer, it seems like sometimes you clash with another person as well, sometimes, right? <laughs> correct, correct. That's why you need you need to to see and uh, uh, not not ethics or that uh, the member members must also uh, be careful not to right. uh, to add in because sometimes there is a lack of time, right? Uh, you are clicking, but the notification that you are clicking there does not ah. uh, arrive yet to the other person. Right. So that's why sometimes the person say, oh, this row is still empty. Right. I think I want to go here. Huh? But it's quite interesting to see that, oh, everybody is 
<laughs> ah. trying to contribute and share their, their, their answers yes. as quick as Correct. they can. Yeah. And you can see at the top here, uh, now we have 22 people coming in. Right. Uh. Royal Rice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, part of, for those who haven't uh, used this before, you can see how people uh, collaborate. And uh, if I put here version history, So this is the one. I can choose whether I want to start back from zero or to restore this the current session. So if you notice, uh, uh, myself as an admin, if I browse here, I know that uh, all anonymous user. So when we contribute, we should contribute from our Google Google account so that... Ah, yes. You need to. Uh, uh, that's one thing. You need to log in first into your in, Google account. In, uh, uh, uh. Right. Oh, no wonder. Uh. So here, if I highlighted this one, that means there is a there's a person who is uh, at this uh, column here, camel. This one is koala. So that is the 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 username, right? Like this one, a uh, dolphin. Okay. When giving editing access for a group task, is it possible to restrict each team member's editing to their own contribution? Remember for editing for other members' work. Ah, okay. Uh, that's a, that is a, some some challenge. Um, basically, what I can do is uh, this thing. I just leave it open. Uh, in my class, uh, just to share, what I do is in some cases. We appoint a leader and the leader will assign, okay, in order to settle this, uh, row one and two, Mr. A, uh, row three and four, Mr. B. So uh, by giving the empowerment, they decide who is controlling who. Uh, that is one thing. Or in my case that I showed to you the Google slide, I have put there. The first five slide is for group number one. The second slide, six to ten, group number two. So that is uh, that is what I uh, I do. But when you give the link, uh, I agree, and uh, there is no way of trying to ensure that the other person, for example, now myself, going to this picture and delete. Uh, there, there is no uh, restriction once you open it up like this. Uh, but uh, this is one of the way where you try to educate them by giving a clear instruction firsthand, which one should be take, uh, should take which one. Uh, so that is the, the way that uh, in my case, but if some of the other members who have experienced this, maybe you can also share in the chat, um, share with uh, some other participant who wants to know how to restrict. But as for me, um, giving them guided instruction, which part that they need to add so that they know, okay, this is the area that they, they need to do. Okay. 
So I think that is finished. And now you can see how you can do some collaboration. So it's the same thing of uh, using this to uh, Google Sheet and also to uh, Google Slide, like the one that I showed to the student. Now, just want to show to you another one. Okay. And now let us do this. I'm trying to show to you uh, one of the things that I use using Google Slide as a quiz. Okay, I'll give this and uh, please, you are most welcome everybody to try. Okay. Okay, I tried to edit other people's input by deleting the word saga. So how do we ensure that no student doing bad thing to others? Huh? That's why I said there is a version history. So you can restore back the previous version that has not been deleted. Okay. I'm going to share this Google Slide activity one. Okay, this is how. This is a Google Slide. I create a link here. I have selected this. Now I'm trying to create a link. Yeah, this is how you create a link again. All right. I open up anyone with the link. They can edit. Now I copy this link. When you open up this link, the link will ask you to make a copy. That means having this one file automatically enables everybody to have their own file by themselves. So see what is inside there. Try to answer by looking at the video. When you paste inside, they will ask you to make a copy, right? Do you mean Natasha? Uh, oh, sorry, when sorry, I, sorry. When I okay, click, okay. I, I just, yeah. No, 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 no. I need to cancel this. Better oh, I capture okay. this first. Uh, not this one. Uh, okay. okay. So no more a link. I want to give you this one. Okay. Okay. I open up here. Google Keep. I put it this side. Ah, okay. This one. Okay, this is the one I want to give. Sorry. Okay, try again. Please use this one. Ah. So click the latest link, yeah? Yes, click the latest link. It will force you to make a copy. I see this thing will come out. Copy document. So when you click make a copy, it will make a copy. Yeah, it's, it, um, yeah when I click it, um, they ask me to just sign in. Ah, yeah. Yes. Ah, you need to sign in if you don't have. Once you make a copy, you can rename this one based on your file, your own file. Maybe you can ask the student to put in their metric number. Okay, so just watch the video and uh, 
you can try to answer the two. Just uh, get the experience. And uh, please uh, respond in the chat. What, how, how do you find it? To all, to all who is using this, uh, trying this, sorry. Oh, how do you create a copy? Okay, I'll show you again, no problem. Yeah, let me close this. Okay. When you go to a new site like this, you just paste the link. Okay. You just paste the link and enter. This thing will come out. So just click on make a copy. Okay. Please apologize me. Suddenly, I don't know why the line is so, it takes a long time. Okay. You can answer this over here. Uh, I have prepared the box. If you click here, make it a bit, a bit bigger. Maybe hundred percent. Okay, you see this text box. You can click and uh, answer inside here. Let's say you put in. I just put in the wrong answer. Hundred feet. Okay. Button, and you can fill up your name here. When you press, it will play a video. What do we do when we fill in the answer? Uh, after you fill up the answer, what you can do is file, you can email. Oh. Uh, so you can email to the lecturers. Maybe I would normally I will give the email, uh, ask them to rename first, put their metric number oh, okay. uh, top here. That means because they have made their own copy after they have uh, prepared. Go to the file and email. Mm -hmm. So now I've received their answer sheet. So this is uh, using Google Google Slide to create an activity. Uh, apart from just now, I showed how they create content. Mm -hmm. But now as a task or a quiz, they answer and they submit. Very interesting. Ah. I've watched the video anyway. Interesting as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you mean you watched this, this before? No, no, I just watched it just now. Trying ah, to answer the question ah, about yes. the tentacles okay. and everything. Correct. Now, if you notice that video, I've already restricted the time. So that is the, the good thing of having this uh, online platform on uh, Google Drive. You connect online uh, to the Google Google uh, to YouTube, and you can restrict where this the video starts and where it ends actually this video is about i think five minutes but i restrict it to about one minute so the student need not see from the start so they see a portion from there they try to answer i see i've already planned to start at 228 okay, let me start at 228 and they finish about roughly three something. Uh, but the actual video is about eight minutes. Uh, I cannot show here, maybe later, uh, because uh, I want to give you the link for the video. Actually, why I didn't give notes, because uh, all these things have already been given prior to this. So I'll give you the link we have under UMT Remote Learning. So participants can watch over and over in more detail how to prepare this step by step. Are you going to share that? Ah yes, I'm going to. Okay, right. while Thank while some people much. are doing this, okay, <laughs> let me paste into this one. Huh? Where is the Google Keep? Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Ah, the... this is the link for Google Doc.
okay video to google docs okay and another one Okay, this is the link to Google Sheet. Okay, in Google Slide. Okay, <clears throat> and for others, you can go to YouTube. Okay, I'll show you here. In the YouTube. Uh, we have. UMT remote learning. So if you go to this uh, UMT remote learning, so I have here uh, using Google Doc, uh, this one, uh, Google Sheet. Yeah, I'll give to you later to Dr. Nomazina uh, the Google Slide. Where is that Google Slide? Google Doc, Google Sheet. Let me see. Let check first. Another one here is on. Uh, Google Form. I also have here on Google Form. Okay, uh, trying to find Google Slide. Google Slide, if I found out, then I will give uh, to, to Dr. Norma Zlina. Okay, so I guess that's about it. Uh, within this uh, two hours of uh, sharing, using how uh, Google tools are being applied in uh, teaching and learning. So if there's uh, one more question. Uh, separate Gmail account for teaching and learning. All right, like this. Starting from now, I'm using my UMT account because previously, uh, UMT just embarked on this Google Suite starting middle of uh, last year. So prior to that, two, three years ago, I'm using a lot of my personal account. So beginning of this semester, then I start to use a UMT account. So now if you notice here, uh, my work, uh, this is under UMT. Uh, so if you, oh no, this is not. Just now I have access, but can not. Uh, all right, so just to show you, uh, under my subject that just now I shared, uh, so I'm now using the UMT uh, account because we have unlimited storage, so we are not restricted to any file size. So that is a good thing about it. But prior to this, I'm using uh, my own personal account. That's why I pay extra to get the 100 gigabyte size. Otherwise, it only give 15 gigabyte free. Okay. Before class, all right. How long did you take to prepare everything before class? Ah, okay. Depends. Content I created earlier. Uh, for example, when I start to teach this uh, diploma student online, which is started in uh, July. So since June, I'm beginning to develop the instructional design. 
uh, for example, this topic, what are the things that I need to, to prepare? Uh, so, uh, after that, generally it will take for me maybe about uh, one to two hours if I were to prepare a video content. Uh, but if I were to prepare just now the template for lab work, it just take about 15 minutes. If you notice just now that I showed to you, I have lab one, lab, uh, sorry, group one, group two. So it's just a matter of making a copy. The template is very simple to prepare. So about 15 minutes uh, can be done. Okay, I would like to show to you, but again, okay, let me open up again. It because it's too much. Okay. Uh, last uh, few minutes, I just want to show to you this Jamboard. How Jamboard can be used also to create content. Okay. Just want to show maybe a few seconds of the video that I created using Jamboard. Jamboard also, you can do it as a collaborative work. Okay. So I'm using my uh, tablet because I can write using a pen. Uh, can you see the video? Ah, uh, okay. Forward a little bit. Ah, uh, okay. Just show it to you. So you can uh, draw the diagram and uh, explain to them the groupings of the fish. So if you have a tablet or what, you can just use, or if you use a, 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 your laptop, you can use that, um, we call it Huion, uh, something like a writing pad connected to a laptop, and uh, then you can uh, use it. So, then if you want to explain the, the separation of the groups, so to me, it's better to use this, even though you can also use it using PowerPoint, but PowerPoint, you can, you need to, to prepare it earlier. So uh, this is how I created content using Jamboard. If sometimes students ask me, they don't understand certain things. So I just create it on the fly and uh, just do it okay okay ah now i can open it just now dr r zack asking me so like this one when i'm preparing the oh not the lab assignment So like this one, uh, Amali 2, for example. So this template can be created in a very short time for each group. So you prepare the link for every group and you just post the link to the respective uh, group members and they can uh, open up and uh, focus on their things. Okay, thank you very much again. And uh, sorry for some of the lag and delay at the technical things. I hope that within this... Uh, two hours uh, participant get the idea on how Google tools can be done and also have some ideas on what are the apps in the Google tools that you can use for your teaching and learning. And most importantly, as uh, I always highlighted, the most important, these are just tools. The most important is the instructional design, the process of learning that you want the student to attain or acquire or experience when they are being exposed to all this uh, platform. So with this, thank you very much again for Unimas, Dr. Katini, Dr. Nomazirina for invitation. Very grateful uh, to have this opportunity uh, to meet new friends, to share uh, knowledge to all of you. And sorry again for any uh, shortcoming from me.
that's all. Thank you, thank you, Alhamdulillah. Thank you very much, Dr. Shariza, for the interesting and engaging sessions on Google Tools for Teaching and Learning. Um, me personally, I learned a lot from this workshop and I do believe um, a lot of the participants also benefited from this workshop as well. Um, I think we managed to answer most of the questions and the demonstration that you have shown us. Okay, and the ideas that actually come up from the sharing um, can also be applied in our teaching and learning. I have some ideas as well um, for my class, which is a new course, Sensation and Perception. <laughs> What's that called? <laughs> so, for even uh, using the sh uh, Google Sheets, can also engage students to you know share the experience on senses, perceptions. So yeah, the sharing today really helped us to come up with ideas and plan our instructions well. So thank you again on behalf of Unimas and also the Academic Training Unit of CAR uh, for accepting our invitation and sharing with us this valuable tool that we can consider for our teaching and learning. So if there's no more questions, I think we will end this workshop. A big thank you again. So assalamu alaikum Dr. Shariza and have a nice day to everyone. We will share the recording to our participants. Um, do not worry. Um, we will also share the, the, the link that Dr. Shariza has shared as well today um, and any other things that we think is, is beneficial, beneficial to our participants. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Thank you. Hope, Thank you, hope everyone. to collaborate again, eh, Dr. Shah? Inshallah. Yes. 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 Hope to. Teaching profile. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shah, for today. Yeah. Assalamualaikum. Wa alaikum salam. If I have uh, any more of this, uh, I can go further. Uh, yeah, sure. Maybe I'll just send you the video. If I have created more videos, then uh, maybe for for you to share with other Unimas members. Okay. Thank you okay. very much. All right. Okay. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam.